Who's widely considered to be the father of meteorology? Well, the answer's coming up on Weather 101. Hi there, Aaron here, your friendly neighborhood meteorologist, and I'm back today to answer your questions about the weather. For this video, I thought I'd go back, back to a time when we didn't know why it rained or how clouds formed. Here is a brief history of meteorology, the study of weather. The first written references to weather can be traced back to about 3000 BC in a book of Vedic scriptures called the Upanishad. This book makes references to things like how clouds form and certain types of seasonal weather cycles. About 3,000 years later, a Greek by the name of Thales became the first person to create a weather forecast. It was for the crop harvest, but it was based on his observations of the water cycle, which is a fundamental process in meteorology. In 350 BC, Aristotle wrote his thesis called Meteorologica. It didn't deal specifically with weather, but more broadly with his theories about earth science. During the Middle Ages, a lot of people from the region we now know as the Middle East wrote about their understanding of different types of weather. Things like thunder, rain, clouds, snow, and even rainbows. They also began the first attempts at understanding how to predict the weather, mainly based on the lunar phases, constellations, and of course the sun. The first weather observation instrument wouldn't be invented until 1441. That was when the son of a Korean king came up with the first standardized rain gauge. About 50 years later, Christopher Columbus became the first European to record his experience of a hurricane. In 1607, Galileo invented one of the most important weather instruments that we use today, a thermometer. It was called a thermoscope and it looks just like this. The way you read this is you look for the grouping here of the top part of these bubbles here, and the very bottom bubble of this top group is where you would read the temperature. So there's a little metal tag attached to the bottom of this, and it says 72 degrees right now. So that's the approximate temperature of the air in this room. During the 17th century, more instruments aimed at observing the weather are invented. In the 18th century, the records of those observations are used to come up with the principles that govern weather patterns. In the 19th century, efforts were made to create observational networks. In the United States, the U.S. Weather Bureau was created in 1890. We now know that bureau as the National Weather Service. But believe it or not, our greatest strides in meteorology didn't occur until the computer was invented. This allowed scientists to input their observations, combine them with laws and principles of nature and physics, and reliably extrapolate what may happen. And just like that, you've got weather forecasting. And that brings us to where we are today, refining our forecasting techniques. Not just for that seven day forecast that you see during the news, but also for things like where tornadoes might form or where hurricanes are headed so that we can better protect people and property. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you have a weather related question, feel free to drop them in the comments section down below and I'll try to answer them on another edition of Weather 101. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You can also rate, share, and subscribe here on YouTube. I put out a new video every Wednesday. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter at Weather101Net. That's where you'll get a new weather word of the week every Monday and a new weather fact every Friday. Oh, and I didn't forget who's widely considered to be the father of modern meteorology. Well, that would be a British chemist by the name of Luke Howard. He created extensive records of weather that happened in London during the late 18th century. He also came up with the nomenclature that we use today to name clouds. And that'll do it for this edition of Weather 101. So until next time, see ya.